Geraldine, tell us about the platform and what exactly it includes. What's making investors think that this could be sold to the French nation? Oh, hi. Well, it's a very reasonable platform. Um, Macron, first of all, is one of the candidates to address the EU deficits, and that's very important. Um, he's very um, pro-European. He also uh, promises to um, cut um, costs, uh, labour costs. So that's definitely music to ears of potential investors um, in France, foreign investors to France. So it's, um, it's addressing practically everything. It's also reasonable. Uh, if you're a French voter and you are told that you won't have to work uh, any longer, that makes it, you know, fine to your ears. Uh, so it's sort of extremely balanced in a very uh, French traditional way. But, but um, he's the only one to do so amongst the uh, three main contenders. Well, let's talk about Fillon for a second because it became clear yesterday that indeed he will face embezzlement charges. Will there be a replacement? Who might that be? Uh... Fillon. So right now, Fillon, um, his campaign, it's, it's getting very, very difficult for him. Uh, yes, he uh, said yesterday that he got a letter from his lawyer telling him that he were to be summoned in front of an investigative judge that would be on the 15th of March and that is facing uh, serious charges, embezzlement charges. Uh, so now people within his own ranks are calling for him to step down and to let someone else emerge and be, replace him as the candidate for the right. Um, Fillon is holding on. Um, saying that he's in to stay until the very end. But right now, uh, not only is he facing these charges, but he's facing um, the bleeding. Uh, more and more people are leaving the ship, his ship. And the litmus test will be on Sunday, Sunday at 3 local time. Um, there's a huge, supposedly a huge rally uh, that, has been, or that is being organized by the Eiffel Tower. And uh, his team really hopes that um, a lot of supporters will show up, uh, that everything will be fine, and that uh, it will be somehow um, strengthened uh, by this show of love, of affection, and that he will be able to carry on even if charged with embezzlement. Geraldine, who's benefiting most from the problems that Mr. Fior is facing? Well, that's, that's a very good question, actually, because this is what everyone is wondering right now. And the pollsters, for now, are unable to answer us. They're saying that we might see this sometime around um, um, early next week, around Monday. Uh, but uh, definitely you see already some people leaving. And they are centrist. They are at the left of the right, if I may say. Some actually expect this to benefit Macron. Some think that it might, au contraire, benefit uh, far-right candidate Marine Le Pen. This is an interesting one because uh, Marine Le Pen's uh, core voters, the, the, her pool of voters is very strong, um, like over mobilized. I'm citing a, a pollster here, uh, but it's not really moving. She's remaining steady uh, right now and we don't see her gaining too many supporters. Um, and that's the very problem of all those Fillon voters. Who are they going to turn to? They still don't know. I mean, could they vote for someone uh, as such as Macron, who's perhaps too leftist, too liberal for them? Could they vote for someone as Le Pen, who's, you know, anti-euro, anti-immigration? I mean, anti that is, is also an issue. So uh, we're going to find out probably in days to come. But right now, um, it looks like the, the divides running, the dividing lines running through the uh, French uh, voters' pool are uh, remaining steady and not moving. Geraldine, thank you. Bloomberg's Paris bureau chief, Geraldine Amiel. We're just hearing that Fion's campaign treasurer, Gilles Boyer, has quit his team. One of his big advisers quit yesterday. So further bad news for the right-wing candidate, Mr Fion. The campaign treasurer has quit his team, Bonnie.